This broadcast is brought to you by the British Israel Church of God. The Watchman Program. Evangelist and commentator Peter Salemi. Bringing you the truth about today's world news in the light of Bible prophecy. And greetings, friends. You know, we have a lot of cherished customs, especially here in the Western world, and a lot of these customs have been Christianized by the church, and it's been told to us over and over again that these customs that we have, these ancient customs, are Christian, that it originated with Christianity. And a lot of people are comfortable with that. They believe the propaganda that a lot of these customs that we have are Christian, and because they've been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, they try and justify it, and they even defend a lot of these customs. Just like the case with Grace Community International, the old worldwide Church of God. This church has gone apostate. They first believed in God's law, God's festivals, God's weekly Sabbath day, but have gone apostate. And now they're celebrating a lot of these uh, customs that the world celebrates. And if you go onto their website, they even try and justify a lot of these customs, because these customs have been around with us for hundreds of years. And it's been told over and over again to us that these customs are Christian. But if you live back in the day of the second century church, put yourself in the place of a second century Christian. And you saw a transfer take place right in front of your eyes. You see, one day, the pagans practicing their religion and their customs, and then the next day, all of a sudden, you see the Christian church doing the exact same thing that the pagans were doing, only this time they were doing it to Christ, what do you think that second century uh, Christian would have said to that church? Well, of course, that second century Christian would have condemned the Christian church for taking up paganism and doing it in the name of Christ. He would have called it blasphemous because he wasn't subject to any propaganda for over a hundred, for, for hundreds and hundreds of years. He would have called it blasphemous. He would have, be, he would have been uh, singing a different tune than what, than what you hear from the Christian churches today. And like I said, these customs have been around with us for hundreds of years. It's been told over and over again to us that it is Christian. So if somebody comes around saying that it's not Christian, that it actually originated in paganism, a lot of people get angry. A lot of people get upset because we don't like people messing around with our cherished customs, but it still doesn't change the fact that a lot of these customs are pagan. Case in point, Easter sunrise service. A lot of people think that the Easter sunrise service is Christian, but in fact, when we look at the origins of it, it actually goes back to ancient paganism. Now, a lot of people think that the first uh, Easter sunrise service began in 1732 with the Moravians, one of the oldest Protestant denominations. Held, They held the first uh, Easter sunrise service, and it says here that after an all-night prayer vigil, the unmarried men of the community marched to the local cemetery where they sang hymns of thanksgiving as the sun rose. So here they are at Easter in a cemetery, and of course they're watching the sun rise, and of course they're singing hymns of thanksgiving. And it says the rest of the sect joined the celebration in the following year, and the service became an annual tradition. As the Moravian community spread around the world, the sunrise service came with them. And soon, Protestant churches celebrated it as well. So it started with these people and, of course, got popular around the colonies. And now all the Protestant churches celebrate it. But where did that tradition come from? It says here in this article, April 2007, this month in Moravian history, it says a person called Zizendorf appeared to have been present in that first Easter sunrise service. And it says, this morning we had the nicest celebration among our graves, it did in the cemetery. In later years, Zizendorf attributed the origins of Easter sunrise service to an example from the Greek Orthodox Church. So it comes from an older tradition, from the Greek Orthodox churches. Now, where did that tradition come from? Now, if you've seen my last broadcast on the origins of Lent that you can see on our YouTube channel on the origins of Lent. We talk about a practice 
of the pagans called the weeping for Tammuz back in you can see this in Ezekiel the 8th chapter verse 14 where it says that he brought me to the door of the gate of the eternal's house which was towards the north and behold there sat women weeping for Tammuz and we show you that the origins of Lent come from comes from this pagan practice as uh, the two Babylons says here the 40 days abstinence of Lent was directly borrowed from the worshippers of the Babylonian goddess among the pagans this Lent seems to have been an indispensable preliminary to the great annual festival in commemoration of the death and resurrection of Tammuz. This weeping of Tammuz led to, as one uh, commentary says, it led to the sun, to the worshiping of the sun, which was the climax of all these abominations that you read in Ezekiel the eighth chapter. And that climax was in verse 16. It says here, He brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs towards the temple of the Lord, and their faces towards the east, and they worshiped the sun towards the east. So here they are, back towards the temple, looking at the sun as it rose to the east, east and they worship the sun as it rose. Now, this custom, let me just read a couple of sources for you. This custom, it says here, came from Babylonia. It says, the pagan Mithras of Rome met together at dawn in honor of the sun god. That's from Mystery Babylon Religion, page 156. The Romans, like the ancient Babylonians, were sun worshippers, Tammuz, Mithra, they're all one and the same deity, and of course he is Nimrod of Babylon. Now if you notice in verse 17 of Ezekiel, it talks about putting the branch to their nose. The JFB commentary writes, rather, they held up a branch or a bundle of tamarisk called barsum to their nose at daybreak while singing hymns to the rising sun. So here they are singing hymns to the rising sun they're worshiping the sun as it rose, and as James Frazier in the Golden Bough adds, the sorrow of the worshippers was turning to joy. Here we see the weeping of Tammuz, but then it turns to joy. The resurrection of the god Tammuz was hailed by his disciples as a promise that they too would issue, would issue triumphant from the corruption of the grave. So here we see the pagans worshiping the sun as it rose in the east, and of course that symbolized the resurrection of their god Tammuz. But it also symbolized their triumph also from the corruption, from the corruption of the grave as well. And of course a lot of the pagans did this custom in graveyards, and we see Easter sunrise service taking place in graveyards. And what does God say about this practice? Verse 17, he says, Has thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they, which they commit here? He calls it an abomination. God doesn't want us to do these things. Yet, the Christian church took up this pagan practice. Notice what Vine says in uh, Expository Dictionary of Old and New Testament words in the entry of Easter. The term Easter is not of Christian origin. It's another form of Astarte, which you read of in the Bible, one of the pagan gods in the Bible, one of the titles of the Chaldean goddess, the Queen of Heaven. And all this, the weeping for Tammuz and worshiping sun in the east, all stems from this worship of the Chaldean goddess, the Queen of Heaven. The pagan festival of Easter was quite distinct and was introduced into the apostate pagan religion as a part of the attempt to adopt pagan festivals to Christianity. So the Christian church, as it went apostate, took up a lot of the pagan festivals that we see today. And along with those festivals came all of these customs of worshiping the sun in the east, the weeping of Tammuz that we call Lent today, and so on. British historian Sir James Fraser writes in The Golden Bow, page 361, he says, taken all together, the coincidences of the, Christ the, coincidences of the Christian with the heathen festivals are too close and too numerous to be accidental. They mark the compromise which the church in the hour of its triumph was compelled to make with its vanquished yet still dangerous rivals, meaning the pagan, other pagan religions. And he even says that Protestantism did the same thing in, in the next paragraph. Notice what Ar Arthur Weigall says in Paganism, the Paganism in our Christianity, page 209. 
The policy of the church is to adapt old pagan holy days to Christian ideas and not to suppress them. The festivals, which we call Christmas and Easter, are pagan, not Christian in origin, and that includes all the customs that come along with those festivals. Notice what scholar, this scholar, Aringus, says. He says, the church found it necessary in the conversion of the Gentiles to dissemble and wink at many things and yield to the times, meaning their pagan religion. So the Christian church adopted a lot of the festivals, a lot of the pagan customs, and then turned around and called it Christian when it's not Christian at all. And God says not to do these things, as it says here in Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter, verse 2. God says to the Israelites, you shall utterly destroy the places, meaning the pagan places, wherein the nations which ye shall possess served their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. And that's where the custom of the Christmas tree comes from. Then it says, verse 3, You shall overthrow their altars, break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire, and you shall hewn down the graven images and of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. And then he says in verse 4, You shall not so do unto the eternal your God. God says, don't take up all these pagan altars and practices and customs and turn around and do it to me. And then he says the same thing in Deuteronomy 12, 29 through 32. So God says, don't take up pagan practices and worship me. God has strict guidelines. God has strict rules on how he should be worshipped. I urge you to download this free booklet that we have, Is Easter Christian? free of charge off our website britishisrael.ca and of course we will put the link underneath the youtube player and you can download it from there as well this is peter salemi saying goodbye friends and i'll see you here next time on the watchman program